Hey, welcome back. So as you may be aware, Meta released the new Llama 3 model a few days ago, and it's absolutely outstanding. It is near GPT-4 performance, it's the best open source model in existence, and it's best in pretty much all of its class of model sizes. But for me, the fascinating new thing about this model is they've changed the tokenizer. In fact, they've switched from the existing Llama tokenizer, which is based on sentence piece, to using the same tokenizer that GPT-4 uses, Tick token. In fact, not only are they using the same tokenizer, they're actually using the same vocabulary up to the first 100,000 tokens. After that, they're then using their own tokens. And today in this video, we're gonna deep dive into why and what the implication is. So to get started, let's actually take a look at Meta's blog posting on the subject. They haven't released their technical paper yet, but there's some interesting information in the blog posting itself. So if we look at the line here, it says, in line with our design philosophy, we opted for a relatively standard decoder-only transformer architecture in Llama 3. So in that sense, it's the same as Llama 2. Compared to Llama 2, we made several key improvements. Llama 3 uses a tokenizer with a vocabulary of 128K tokens that encodes language much more efficiently, which leads to substantially improved model performance. In addition, they actually talk about how they've switched to grouped query attention. I'll probably cover that in another video, but I won't cover on this. And it also talks about how it's moved to using sequences of 8,192 tokens for training the models as opposed to the previous 4,096. Now that is super interesting in itself, but I'm not gonna cover that in this video. I'm gonna cover that in a future video as well. But today I wanna focus on this Llama 3 uses a tokenizer with a vocabulary of 128K tokens. They kind of failed to mention that they're using GPT-4's tokenizer, at least for the first 100K tokens there. But we're gonna cover into that. If you're not sure about tokenization, I actually have a nice little reference model of what a transformer model looks like. It's highly simplified, but you can kind of see at the bottom of this, you take input text and then the input text, so in this case, I'm using the phrase, who is Ada Lovelace, actually gets converted into a tokenized form. So essentially every word or subword gets converted into a number. That means the model never ever sees the words directly. What they see is the numeric representation of those words or subwords. So if we look at who is Ada Lovelace there, you can see in this case, this by the way, this is Llama 2 as opposed to Llama 3's tokenizer. You see that the uh, number one means begin of sequence, 116, 4, 4 would represent who, 338 would be is, and then you can imagine that this goes all the way across to the sentence. So when you talk to a model, you're not actually passing through the text who is Ada Lovelace, you're actually taking that tokenized form and you're passing that to the model. Then it will run through all the layers of the model. So it'll start on this embeddings layer, I'll talk about that in a second, go through the attentions layer, and then eventually it'll get normalized into this output layer where you will get a tokenized output. So in the case of who is Ada Lovelace, you're gonna to expect to see some sort of text that says Ada Lovelace is blah, blah, blah. And the output in this case doesn't come back as words, it's gonna come back as the tokenized representation. So similarly, that 23255, 239744 is gonna be a tokenized version of that subwords. You run it back through the tokenizer and then you can get the text. That's how it works. Inside the LLM itself is made up of multiple layers. I'm not gonna go through them massively in this video today, but essentially have you have this embeddings layer, which is essentially a big dictionary of your vocabulary from your tokenizer. So if my tokenizer has 32,000 items, there's gonna be 32,000 keys. In the case of Llama 3, you see they move from 32,000 tokens in their old tokenizer to having 128,000 in their new dictionary, their new tokenizer. So that means vocabulary wise, there is a four times increase in the size, essentially of that embeddings layer. Architecturally, if we wanna see how this translates to the real physical model, we can actually go to uh, the config JSON in Hugging Face. So if I just go to Hugging Face Meta Dash Llama, Meta Llama 3, 8B Instruct, and then essentially I'm gonna to go to the config JSON. It's under this files and versions. If you just end up in here, which is the straight Meta Llama 3, 8B Instruct, and then you select on files and versions, you will see in there a config.json. I have a whole video that explains how the hugging face models works. I'm not gonna go through that today. 
Uh, but the key things that you can see is this description of the model. And there you go, you've got vocab size is equal to 128256. So if you remember in the AI uh, Meta Llama 3 blog posting where they say they've now moved to 128K uh, in a tokenizer, or in this case, with a vocabulary of 128K tokens, you can see in that config JSON, there is that vocabulary 128256. Now, the other things, if you remember my reference model there for a second, I was talking about uh, the fact that we have uh, these attention layers, so one to n attention layers. Again, if I come back into the model here, you can see number of hidden layers equals 32. So you know that there's gonna be 32 layers in this model. If you wanna see what the physical layers look like, I have this uh, embeddings um, project. Again, it's part of the embeddings video that I did. And within there, there is a nice little uh, Python script called print layers that will allow you to print out the layers of the models. So if I just uh, put in Python print layers, pass in the model meta llama, meta llama 3, 8 b instruct, and then run that, it's actually gonna show you all the layers of the uh, Llama 3 model. So you can kind of see there, this is this embed layers, it's called embed tokens. And then you can see layer, self-attention, Q, K, V, et cetera, rotary embeddings all the way down. There's the gates, gate up, down, blah, blah, blah. And then this is repeated for each layer. So it goes layer one, two, all the way down to layer 31. So that's 32 layers and then you have that normalization layer. So if I come back into my reference model for a second, exactly what you have here, the embeddings layer is that embed tokens layer that you saw earlier, the attentions layers is one to, or zero to 31, the 32 layers, and then the output layer is that final normalization layer, and then eventually I get my response. So if I was to run this against the original uh, Llama 2, so if I just change this uh, to Llama 2, we'll say 7B, and I'll just put dash HF there, so uh, it will bring up the old model. You will be able to see that it prints out the layers again. And if we look at this, you can see layers. So the first layer, embed tokens, this is the embeddings layer, layer zero, self-attention, Q, K, V, blah, 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 gate up, gate down. So there isn't any real architectural changes as such. It's still a transformers model, 32 layers, normalization layers, the same, etc. So there's not really much architectural changes to the models. Of course, they've trained it differently, but the big architectural change is that they've changed tokenizer. Now you're probably asking yourself, why have they changed the tokenizer and what is the impact? And actually this table is gonna help you understand why. So if I look at the original Llama 2B uh, model there, it was a 7 billion parameter model. Again, this applies to the 70 billion parameter model, but I'm gonna stick with the smaller models for just now. But if we look at the Llama 2 7B model, you see it's got a vocabulary of 32,000 tokens in its dictionary. And then it's got 4,096 hidden dimensions. Now, if you're wondering what the hidden dimension is in this sense, this actually represents the vectorized form throughout all the various layers. Now, in the case of this initial embeddings layer, Essentially what you've got is you have a vector that represents each token in the dictionary. And in this case, it's gonna be 4,096 is gonna be the size. So it will be a 4,096 sized vector. So it's gonna be quite a big vector. Again, I go through this on the kind of embeddings video that I did recently as well. And you can see this actually, if I come back into the Meta Llama 3B instruct model there, you can see hidden size equals 4096. So it's actually in the config of the model. So actually, if I come back into the table here, in the original Llama 2 7B model, where it had a vocab of 32,000 tokens and 4,096 dimensions, that means in the 7 billion parameter model, actually 131 million of those parameters was actually taken up by the embeddings layer alone. Everything else above that was the attention layers, the 32 attention layers is actually sharing the rest. There is some other uh, parameters being taken up by the positional embeddings. I'll cover that in another video, but that gives you an idea of the size. But that means 32,000 tokens is just gonna be what represents the vocabulary. Now, 
in this case, if we now look at the Llama 3 8 billion parameter model, that 32,000 has became 128,000. The dimensions have remained the same, so it's still 4,096 dimensions, but that means the embeddings parameters has gone up in size. It went up to 525,000. Uh, 336. So actually, it represents six and a half percent of the total parameters. So if I look at the uh, the eight billion parameter model, it takes up six and a half percent is just on that embeddings layer, and I'm I'm discounting the positional embeddings there. Now that also means if we look at this, uh, if this was on a seven billion parameter model rather than an eight billion parameter model, it that would have taken up seven and a half percent of the embeddings layer. So this probably explains in itself why Meta has went with an eight billion parameter model. So if you think of the group query attention changes that they've made, if you think about the fact that the initial embeddings layer has increased, then actually it sort of makes sense to go up slightly in size of model, eight billion parameters, rather than trying to knock off one of the layers. So they clearly wanted to stick with the 32 layers and therefore to handle this, they've, they've went to eight billion parameters. So that's actually probably why uh, it's a slightly bigger model in that sense. Now in the video I did, uh, earlier this year, I went through the JAMA 2 billion parameter model and the JAMA 7 billion parameter model, which uses the Gemini tokenizer. And the case of Gemini has got 256,000 tokens, so it's double the size, the dictionary is double the size. But you see the impact on the smaller models, the JAMA 2B model has, that means that embeddings layer has taken up more than 25%, a quarter of the entire model is just embeddings layer. And if I add positional embeddings, it's probably higher there. But the 7 billion parameter model is 11.2%. So that, that's, that's a huge impact on these smaller models just taken up by that embeddings layer. But of course, as you go higher up in the parameters, so Llama 370 billion parameters model, it means that embeddings layer is 0.75%. Uh, so it's actually quite tiny. And of course, they're training a 400 billion parameter models. So that's gonna go down to like a tiny percentage. So um, this embeddings layer is really, really important and it's really helping the performance uh, of the model. Um, so it, but the downside is, is it has a bigger impact on the smaller models. So there you go, that, that's really what's going on. So if you wanna calculate the size of an embeddings parameter model, you can just do dimensions multiplied by uh, the vocab. Now, of course, you can calculate all the other layers. I will cover this in another video where you're essentially gonna do those, uh, do some uh, calculations on the keys, etc., uh, And then that will tell you the parameter size of each layer. And, and, I will, and I will show you how you can actually calculate the size of an entire model. But I just wanted to, show you the impact of this embedding size here. Now, why is that important from a uh, model perspective? Because actually the larger the vocabulary, then the better it's gonna be at multi-language, right? If you think about thing, languages such as Japanese or Maori or Nordics, etc., cetera, um, they have very, very different word makeups from English. And therefore, when you are looking at Llama 2, it's really focused on the English language, hence the 32,000 tokens and coding languages as well. Whereas if you look at something like a GPT-4, it's much better at multilingual because quite frankly, it, it has more tokens to kind of cover that. Um, now, of course, in the higher layers, it can connect the tokens together. But again, you're putting more work on the model, whereas actually, if you can deal with the tokens in a, in a whole form at the beginning, then it's gonna have a better chance of, of constructing these texts. So let's let's take a look at the tokenizer uh, there. As I said before, this is the Llama 2 original tokenization. And you see here, who is Ada Lovelace? And there you go, the beginner sequence is one, who is 1164, is is 338, eight is 23255. In this case, it's split up Lovelace into three tokens. So L-O-V, L, and Ace. And then there's a question mark for the final one there. So you see how that splitting up is happening. It's basically just looking at its dictionary uh, to do this. If I wanted to, I could actually run the tokenizer. Again, I'm gonna use the embed code that I used in my embeddings video. And if I just run uh, the uh, who is Ada Lovelace against the original Llama 2 7 billion parameter model, you can see the exact same numbers that you saw on the slide earlier. Now for fun, if we want to, we can also run this against the Llama 3 model. So the exact same print token script, the exact same 
uh, phrase, who is Ada Lovelace, but this time we're gonna use Meta Llama 3 8 billion parameter instruct model. And if I run this, you can see it's got completely different tokenization. Uh, there's no begin of sequence in this case. You see it just says who, completely different number, is Ada LOV, that splits up the same. Probably the big difference there is you're seeing that as a token, this is space LOV in this case, and then EL is one one token and ACE is a token as well. So slightly different is it again has got a space beforehand, uh, but in this version it doesn't. So there is there is some subtle changes here, but you can see completely different tokenizer. Now what is more fun if I change this? But this time I put in GPT-4. Now what's actually happening underneath the hood? In this uh, script, I actually use uh, the tick token library, so OpenAI's tick token library, um, to be able to run this against the GPT-4 tokenizer. And if I just run this here, uh, you are gonna see there, it actually comes back with the exact same values. So Llama 3 and G GPT-4, who is ADA, it tokenizes exactly the same certainly for the English language. So Meta has literally taken the tick token library. It's literally taken the first 100,000 tokens. The GPT-4 tokenizer set that as the first 100,000 and then uh, you know use that for their own tokenizer. That is a massive shift from the 32,000 tokenizers. Just picking up tick token and the GPT-4 tokenizer vocabulary and running with that huge shift. But as you can kind of see in their blog posting, they're saying uh, it encodes the language much more efficiently, which leads to substantially improved model performance. So they've taken a straight look at this and said, actually 32,000 tokens isn't enough. I'm putting uh, much more work on the model itself because it's going to have to use more tokens to join these things together. But it's saying it's actually, uh, it's getting better results uh, as well. So I think that's a really interesting thing, but they haven't bothered to even train their own uh, tokenizer in this sense. They've literally picked up GPT-4 for the first 100,000 tokens. So if we want to, I actually in another video created a benchmark uh, that we can run against tokenizers and see how it performs against different things. Again, all of this is up on my uh, my GitHub, but as you can kind of see here, I have a, a, uh, a repo called tokenizer benchmark. And within that, I've got this sort of benchmarking script. It's only benchmarking the uh, tokenizer. So if I just run the benchmark for a second, the benchmark's really interesting. It actually allows you to put in different model names. So in this case, I'm running through the Mistral 7B model, the original Llama 2, 7 billion parameter, uh, Llama 3, 8 billion parameter, and GPT-4 and the Gemma model as well. So I'm essentially comparing the GPT-4 tokenizer, the Mistral tokenizer, the original Llama 2 tokenizer, and Llama 3's tick token version, which is slightly different from GPT-4, uh, but the same. But if we look at this, the sort of things in my benchmark is things like uh, Pokemon characters, YouTubers, rock bands, TV shows, soccer teams, different languages, Japanese, French, Maori, uh, you know, uh, different code, different characters like Harry Potter characters, etc. cetera. Um, uh, American cities, American states, famous uh, cities, world cities, French cities. But let's take a look at this because it's really interesting. You see for things like Pokemon, you see their Llama 3 and GPT-4 are getting the exact same number of tokens. There is definitely an efficiency over Llama 2, which was at 109. Um, of course, Gemma, the Gemini tokenizer has got 256,000 items in its vocabulary. So again, it's kind of more efficient there. But uh, I think 128,000 is not bad. But you see the tokenization is exact before GPT-4 and Llama 3, which you would expect. But what's interesting about this is that, of course, this is only the English uh, tokens in the beginning there. So you would expect this to be exact. But look what happens when I move into things like Japanese text. See here, uh, Llama 3 actually translates into 323 tokens, whereas GPT-4 has 488. So Llama 3 is actually more efficient at Japanese than GPT-4 is from a token perspective. 
Um, similarly, French has got maybe a slight improvement. Maori's a slight improvement. Cyrillic, huge improvement. 341 tokens using Llama 3 versus 526 in a GPT-4. Uh, things like Welsh hasn't got much of an impact. Sorry, Welsh. Uh, and the same with uh, Spanish. But, uh, but you know, it's, it's not bad. I think the other one that's probably interesting as well is I don't think it's just language changes, but it's also some improvements in things like world cities. So you can kind of see their world cities, 481 tokens with Llama 3, 521. So what does this mean? It means that we know that the first 100,000 tokens are obviously the same as GPT-4 and Llama 3. But for those extra 28,000 tokens, what Meta has decided to do is really push on multilingual aspects. They pushed in a lot of Japanese tokens. They pushed in a lot of uh, Cyrillic tokens. Uh, they put in things like different world cities. So they've just really focused on multilingual side of things. You can also see they haven't really focused on things like code, right? So if I look at uh, things like Rust code, for example, and if I look at basic code, if I look at C code, tokenization wise, it's the same. So they've not stuffed any extra coding tokens in there. They purely focused on tokenization of multilingual and tried to improve that. And of course, you don't need to take my word for it. The benchmark is actually, along with the other scripts, is in my uh, GitHub. So what we are going to do is I'm going to come back into my embeddings folder and use the print tokens uh, script again. But this time, I'm going to uh, pass through some Japanese text. Don't ask me what that means. I have no clue. Um, but if I just pass that as the prompt and I'm using the tokenizer GPT-4, you see it's going to come back with a list of the tokens there. And you see nothing ever goes over 100,000. That token there is 98,000, for example. But now if I rerun this, but this time I'm going to pass through Meta Llama 3 8B instruct. So I'm going to run through Llama 3 model through this. You are going to see that the beginning is the same, 58246. But here, it's actually started to concatenate. It's got some extra tokens here. So these two tokens here have actually been brought together as a single token, so 106581. Whereas in GPT-4 version, uh, it's two different subtokens. So this is split up into separate tokens. Whereas here, it is uh, an entire token. And the key thing that you can see there is the ID is 106,581. Again, similar, we've got these two tokens here, 102,000. And then we've got another one that's above 100,000 there. So we've got three places where it's using concatenated tokens, whereas GPT would have actually sort of put those tokens together. And, I, and that is why on the benchmark, uh, you are seeing that for things like Japanese text and uh, Cyrillic text, etc., that the Llama 3 model is actually performing a little bit better because it's using the 100,000 to 128,000 dictionary terms to actually have more Japanese Cyrillic text, etc., really push the multilingual support. And again, if I come back into the original uh, blog post and Llama 3 uses a tokenizer. You could have said it was GPT-4's tick token tokenizer uh, with a vocabulary 128K token that encodes language much more efficiently, which is exactly what it does, which leads to substantially improved model performance. So there you go, Llama 3 is now using the tick token tokenizer. Again, all of the uh, repos are available uh, up in my GitHub. And of course, if you want to deep dive onto the tick token tokenizer and how that works exactly, I've got a big deep dive on the GPT-4 tokenizer. Of course, that's going to be super relevant to Llama 3. It goes through things like Morse code. It talks about Japanese and stuff as well. So it's worth checking that out. You can deep dive into that and also have a video on hugging face. And I've got one on the Gemma tokenizer as well. So it's worth spending time to understand these things better. But as I talked about in those previous videos, the tokenizer and the embeddings layer especially is really important in the model architecture. And maybe what I'll do in a future video is uh, using the visualizer I created in the uh, visualizing the embeddings layer video. We'll probably take that and then we'll actually take a real look at what that embeddings layer looks like in Llama 3 in a future video. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. 
Um, it actually backs up one of the things that I've been saying is that the tokenizer is super important. It actually backs up what I've been saying in some of the previous videos that the tokenizer and the embeddings layer is actually one of the really key things to model performance. And we can now see that, you know, not only is GPT-4 running with a fairly large vocabulary uh, tokenizer, you know, Llama 3 has now moved in that direction. We saw this with the Gemma models. Uh, and the Gemini models as well, where they went for a large multilingual tokenizer and embeddings layer. And again, even Mistral, which was using the same tokenizer and embeddings layer as uh, Llama 2, in their large models, etc., they've now switched to a larger tokenizer as well. So again, I think this really sort of opens up what's going on in these architecture. And again, I'm looking forward to one of my future videos where I'm going to rip open the embeddings layer and take a look at that. And of course, we'll go through some of the other layers. And anyway, I hope you find this useful and uh, I'll catch you in the next video.